Uh, hello, my name is Serena Ding, and I am a current junior at Firo H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Arts and Performing Arts in New York City, specializing in instrumental music. My major instrument is the alto saxophone. Outside of school, I'm the rising first chair saxophonist at the New York City All City Concert Band, which is a selective citywide extracurricular performance ensemble and also the founding president of United Under Art, uh, a global student-led service organization that aims to provide arts opportunities and experiences to the underprivileged communities and bridge the gap between the STEM and the arts. Uh, Sophia, you can give an introduction now. Hi everyone, my name is Sophia Wang. I am a junior at Fiorella H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Arts and Performing Arts. I am a visual arts major at the school in school, I am a digital media intern. Outside of school, I am a Bowery Art Collective resident artist, and I am the director of marketing for United Under Art. Eli? Hi, everyone. I'm Eli. I'm a junior at LaGuardia High School as well. And there, I play saxophone and clarinet, and I am also the management director of United Under Art. So here's going to be our agenda for today. Uh, I think everyone is muted, but in case you're not, please make sure to have your microphone muted. And also you may submit your questions on the chat and we will get to them at the end. Okay. So before we get started, I want to just briefly touch on um, our organization, United Under Art. Um, so as, you guys, as I said before, we are a global student-led community service organization. And our mission is to provide the arts to as many underprivileged communities and vulnerable populations as possible, as well as bridge the gap between STEM and the arts. And our events uh, have included concerts and workshops like the one today, fundraisers and donation drives. Um, the picture on the left is part of an art auction one of our chapters did in North Carolina and they raised over $700 to support artists struggling due to the pandemic. On the right is a picture um, last year that we did of a holiday concert at a senior nursing home and rehabilitation center. Currently, we are raising money to um, support hospitals in New York City fighting against COVID-19, and we're raising money to buy them supplies like like oximeters and stethoscopes and ultrasound scanners and currently we've raised um i think maybe like five thousand ish some dollars but um every dollar counts so if you can donate it would be that would be really really helpful to the hops the hospitals that are fighting against this pandemic so and then sorry and then at the after this workshop, we will also be providing free tutoring in the arts to some of the um, physicians, children, or essential workers, children during this time. And we will also be partnering with other student organizations like Helix, which is a STEM nonprofit to provide STEM tutoring as well. So now I'm gonna get started on our first official topic of today. Um, as you guys know, we all go to LaGuardia High School in New York City. And this is a specialized high school that has a dual mission and it is equally focused on the arts and academics. Our school is committed to providing rigorous pre-conservatory training as well as the regular academic course load of most high schools, which means that we have an extra three to four music or art or dance or whatever studio class you have every single day along with the regular math, science, English, those kinds of classes. And our school in particular is known for having some very famous alumni, such as Jennifer Aniston, Nicki Minaj, Aquafina, Timothy Chalamet, among others, and having inspired the film Fame. So now I'm gonna play you the trailer for Fame. The Dove Beauty Bar makes my skin glow. I've encouraged Serena, my best friend, to switch. She was moisturized and clean. My friend Stephanie, her skin was dry. I'm like, girl, you better get you some Dove. She hooked me up with a quarter moisturizing cream. Dove cleans and cares beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. 
We've seen 150 students today. They all swear that they have a special gift to offer the school. Do you have a special gift? Yes. Wow. Um, but she thinks she's like the most talented kid in the school. Maybe she is. I'm actually working on a track right now. Every teenager on this block wants to be the next rap or singer. Wow, be talented. And who in the world told you you were so special? You did. <laughs> Everything you want to change about yourself. All the parts of yourself that you keep secret. It's your power. It's who you are. Okay. So yeah, that was the trailer. Um, that was the 2009 version of Fame. And now we're going to transition to talking about what it actually is like because we don't we don't actually dance on the tables and stuff. Um, so before we get started, I just wanted to make sure this is some of the classes that we're going to be talking about today may not be offered at every single high school. Most of them may will probably not be, even if it is an art school, because every art school is going to be kind of different. Um, but some of these classes will be offered, so we want to give you an overview of them. And also, even if you're going to a regular high school, these may be some of the electives. So I'm going to hand it off to Sophia to talk about arts classes first. So I'm going to be talking about some visual arts classes that you might see or you might take in high school. So here's a quick disclaimer. Each high school has a different system of scheduling your arts classes. Some people might take one specific course freshman year while others might take it senior year. Um, but I'm just going to be talking about what are the courses that I've taken before at my school. So for art majors at LaGuardia, here are some classes offered in my freshman year. I had to take a double period art class known as Studio Practice 1 and 2. SP1 is for the fall slash winter semester and SP2 is for the winter slash spring semester. In the first half of the year, you focus on the basis, basics of drawing such as contour lines, shading, value scale, and in the second half of the year, you learn about color theory and you explore different kinds of mediums such as tempera paint, acrylic, and watercolor. In my sophomore year, I took three periods of art, a double period class called SP3 and 4, and a single period class in printmaking slash ceramics. Like SP1 and 2, SP3 and 4 are divided based on the semester. SP3 focuses on design while SP4 focuses on painting. For a single period class, I got to take printmaking for one semester and ceramics for the other. And for printmaking and ceramics, I did not have to buy any of the materials. This school has some materials and this is usually the case for all arts high schools that have the course. Single period classes that you could take in your junior year are 
illustration slash fashion, pen and ink slash anatomy, realistic drawing slash anatomy, and AP Studio Art 2D Design. So for other high schools, they might also offer other AP classes. So there's also AP, 3D Design, and Drawing. Double period classes may include photography, architecture slash interior design, advanced painting. Um, specifically for our school, there are two advanced painting courses and one includes watercolor along with the regular advanced painting curriculum. Digital media, in other schools, this might be called graphic design slash animation um, and sculpture. Digital media has two courses, beginning and advanced. So all juniors who choose to take digital media will be placed in the beginnings course. So if you already know how to use like Adobe, Illustrator, Photoshop, you're still going to be placed in the beginners course. The advanced digital media course is only open to juniors who plan on continuing the digital media course in their senior year. And what's cool for my school is that the digital media department also offers an internship for juniors and seniors. And in other arts high schools, some teachers may also offer you, offer you like other um, community service credits to do extra work, or they may offer you internships as well. If you have a question about the internship, you can ask me at the end of the session. Um, in your senior year at my school, you have the freedom to choose a double period and single period art class from the courses I provided earlier. However, you must either take you must also either take art history or AP art history. Both are single period courses. So at other arts high schools, you, you might also take an art history course if the school offers it. So you get a better understanding about the history of art. Some seniors may also decide to drop an academic class that is not required for them to graduate and add in another, another art class. Seniors also have the opportunity to showcase their work in the senior art show. So for our school, if you're a freshman, sophomore, or a junior, you also have the opportunity to showcase your work in school. So we have um, a semi-annual show and you could showcase it in the semi-annual and this happens two times a year. Seniors at um, in New York City will also be offered to take the New York City Commencement Examination Visual Arts. So now I'm going to hand it off to Eli to talk about specific instrumental classes. Hi everyone. So for instrumental majors, the programming is a bit more complicated because each student takes classes specific to their instrument. Uh, but here's the general breakdown. So every instrumental major is required to take a sight singing class, a music history class, and a music theory class sometime during their four years of high school. Here at LaGuardia, we have four levels of music theory. We have theory one, theory two, theory three, and advanced placement theory, along with general music history classes um, and a general sight singing class. So every student is also required to take a performance ensemble class throughout uh, every single year of their four years of high school. Um, but this is easy to fulfill because our school has three concert bands, four orchestras, two of them are full symphony orchestras. We also have two jazz bands, two pit orchestras, two chamber classes, and a new music ensemble. Many students also take a technique class for their instrument. We have technique classes for woodwinds, strings, piano, guitar, and percussion that um, they're arranged in levels from elementary, intermediate, to advanced. If students want more music classes or have a block in their schedule, they can always choose elective classes, which are not required. These classes include music tech in the recording studio, beginning guitar or piano, and jazz improv or jazz history. Non-elective music classes require an audition or a placement. So the four orchestras, for example, are ranked as elementary, intermediate, junior, and senior orchestra. Senior orchestra is the highest level orchestra and students place into it based on end of year placement tests. Smaller ensembles such as the pit orchestra and new music ensemble require a live audition. Needless to say, there is still an incredibly supportive environment in the, in, in the instrumental department and students are constantly helping their peers to succeed. 
So for instrumental majors, we also have juries in our junior or senior year, which are basically major playing assessments in front of our teachers. Juries are common in many music schools, especially in music conservatories, and it helps us prepare for them if we want to go to conservatory. Um, so, but we will touch on how to prepare for such a performance later in the webinar. So that's pretty much it for instrumental music. Um, if you want details, just ask questions, but uh, now it would be unfair to just cover art and instrumental music. So I'm going to briefly cover vocal, dance, drama, and technical theater um, because I don't want to leave you guys out there. So yeah, so I'm going to start with vocal music first. So vocal music is, um, it's similar to instrumental music and that you need a performance ensemble, you need music theory, you need sight singing, you need music history, except um, each vocal student throughout their four years takes a singing technique class, and they, they're also in a chorus. And our school has four levels. Um, no, we don't have four levels. We have different chorus. We have women's chorus. We have girls' chorus for sophomores. Uh, we have a senior chorus that you need to audition into. So every student's in a chorus. And then we also have electives such as show, such as show choir that you can um, audition to be in. And our school also has a musical, an all school musical. It's very competitive, but um, if you're a good vocalist, you can probably get in. Um, and then vocal majors can also take the same electives that instrumental majors can take, such as beginning guitar. They can also take AP theory with instrumental students. They can take um, new music ensemble as well. So at our school, the vocal departments and the instrumental departments are pretty intertwined. So next is dance. Dance at our school is um, pretty, it's one of the more competitive arts. So a lot of the students in dance just take the same classes throughout their four years. So in freshman year, you're gonna take ballet, dance history and um, contemporary dance. Um, and you'll have it four periods a day throughout all four years of your high school. Um, and then the same as same class as sophomore year. Uh, junior year, uh, some students can take tap or jazz. Uh, and then senior year, you, uh, you have a dance business class where you learn how to navigate the world of dance. But generally everyone just takes the same year, uh, same classes every year. And then for drama, uh, freshman year, all drama kids um, take the same class. They're all in drama block. So they have three periods of drama a day. They just learn the general aspects of drama. Same thing for sophomore year. Um, and then junior year, they have a musical theater class and they can also take electives such as juggling. And then same thing for senior year and senior year as a drama major, you have um, a senior performance. It's called the uh, spring drama festival. So it's very popular at the school and all the um, senior drama majors are involved. And then finally, I'll discuss technical theater. So this is if you like set building, lighting, like uh, all the aspects of a performance that aren't performing. So as a tech theater major, your classes will, uh, you have three periods a day where you learn a variety of things such as costumes, lighting, um, set design. So you have that freshman year and then throughout sophomore, junior, senior year, you can specialize in one of them. So you can specialize in lighting or costumes or makeup or something like that. Um, and then as a tech major, you work all the shows at the school. So they, they build all the sets for the, um, for the musical, for our opera. They build the sets. Uh, they do all the lighting for the instrumental shows. So they, they're really the backbone of our school. And um, people don't realize how, like, how much work the technical theater major is, but uh, it's definitely worth it. So, yeah, and again, if you want more details about any of these specific talents, just ask in the Q&A. Um, so finally, I'm gonna talk about the certification uh, for music. So at LaGuardia, we all graduate with an arts diploma, not a regular diploma. So for music certification at our school, as an instrumental major, you're gonna need a certain amount of arts credits. So we have our music history and our music theory. Um, and then you're also gonna have to take amusement commencement, commencement exam senior year, which is a multiple choice exam that tests your knowledge on music history and music theory. And finally, 
for an art certification cer uh, certification at our school. Uh, you're going to have to participate in uh, the NISMA festival. So in New York State, we have a music association called NISMA. And junior or senior year, you're going to have to participate in their music festival. And if you do all of that, then senior year on your diploma, uh, we get an art certification. So it looks very good for college. And now Sophia is going to cover the art certification for visual art. Yeah, so for visual art students, um, and this is for generally for anyone, um, you could you could be at a regular public school and still take this test. So what we do is in our senior year, we take the New York City commence, the commencement exam in visual arts, and there is an elig eligibility requirement. So it's only given to high school seniors who have completed at least 10 credits in visual arts coded in their coursework or nine credits if they completed at least two units of foreign language. But high school students who have completed at least six credits of visual arts coded, in, coded into their coursework may also take the exam. So everyone at LaGuardia and other arts high schools in New York City, um, we're already signed up for the exam because we have enough credits. So the exam has a multiple choice portion and test your knowledge of art concepts, analysis, materials, art vocabulary, and of course, art history. That's why we take an art history class our senior year. Um, there is also a portfolios um, section. So you do have to present um, a portfolio and you have a portfolio essay. There's also performance tasks and an essay on analysis and interpretation. And these all go into consideration for your grade. All right, so I'm going to also mention the academics here because we talked to you guys a lot about what the arts are like and what classes we can take. But this is a dual mission school after all. So um, if you're concerned about, you know, going to an art school and saying, you know, I don't know if I really want to go this career path. I really like the arts, but I don't necessarily want to do this for the rest of my life as a, as a career. That's okay because um, the arts art school isn't necessarily, you know, you have to go there just if you're, if you want to become an artist or a musician. Um, really, it's supposed to, you know, um, foster another hobby and another talent for you to do. And we all do have academic extracurriculars as well, um, competitions and also leadership positions in clubs. And we also do take AP exams and AP tests as well. And um, it's not terribly difficult to balance either if you're worried about that, because um, a lot of it just comes um, kind of naturally in the sense that if you really, if you genuinely enjoy doing the arts, it doesn't feel like a lot of work to do it. And um, with time management as well, even if, if your time management is really good, then you're not going to have a problem here either. And then just to uh, um, cap it off, I'm going to play two videos for you guys. One is, um, from one of our famous alumni when he was at the school and one of it um, the other video is um a day in the life of LaGuardia from a student Timmy, Timmy. it's your boy Lil Timmy Tim yeah. what up statistics class come go live G25 yeah 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 live G25 let's go statistics yep statistics yep yep statistics yep statistics yep yep lockdown it's lockdown it's lockdown it's lockdown statistics yep Look at me, it's Timmy T. About to hit him with his ETST. Let's do a party. Let us see the probability you see me on TV. One zero 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 trillion percent. I'm gonna stick a stick of one of the statistical gem. One in a billion. Okay. Um, I don't think we have time to play the entire thing if we want to get 
everything. But yeah, that was, I think that was from one of our talent shows a couple years ago. But um, so yeah, now he's, now he's an actor. I'm going to play this video. I have a vlog channel too, so. Thank Are you like advertising your YouTube channel on my YouTube Hello. Oh, this is so awkward. Good morning, everyone. Go for now than other regular high schools, so to speak. We just have an extra couple of arts classes and students can be, can tend to be a little more um, dramatic at times. But. So now we're going to transition to talking about how to prepare for an instrumental music audition. And um, Ilan and I have both been through this process for multiple programs, be it summer programs, school, of course, um, other programs or competitions. And each one will have probably some slightly different um, requirements, but there are some things that are in, that are um, that they have in common a lot of the times. And you should prepare for all of them, even if you know your specific audition doesn't require it. it they're very important things to know and will help you as a musician. So Eli, you can talk about um, how to select a major piece and prepare that. Yeah. So generally, uh, the major piece you. Um, want needs to show your technical ability as well as your musicality. So um, when I was preparing for my audition, I think LaGuardia, um, they said you can prepare one to two pieces. But um, even though it won't hurt if you prepare one piece, it's best to prepare two pieces, one technical and one musical, because then your auditioners, like, uh, holistically know how you play um, and you don't want anything too simplistic um, it can't be a mainstream popular song for example so now Serena will play an excerpt of a more technical piece that students might sometimes use for auditions so this is Sonata number no. 6 by Vivaldi and I'm going to play maybe like the first three lines or so So, of course, the pieces are not all of the audition at LaGuardia. They're only worth 50% of our audition. The rest is uh, weighed by scales, um, rhythmic exercises, tone matching, and sight reading. So scales, they're going to ask you to play two different scales. And, of course, it could be major or minor um, uh, based on any half step uh, but usually to have two prepared. And then once you're at LaGuardia, 
you're required to learn all of them, but just for the audition, you just need two. Then for rhythmic exercises, they're gonna clap 10 rhythms and you're gonna have to respond to each one. And this is because at school, you're gonna be taking a lot of music theory. Even though you're required to only take one year, most students take upwards of um, three to four years of music theory or two to four years of music theory. So you're gonna have to use the rhythmic training. And then uh, the third part is tone matching. So they're gonna play a note on the piano. And you're gonna have to sing it back. And even if you're an instrumental major, um, uh, they're just trying to make sure you're not tone deaf. Because again, in music theory, if you're tone deaf, um, your chances of being good at music theory are very low. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. Um, that's just, uh, that's really just five parts. Oh wait, I forgot sight reading. The last part of sight reading, they're just gonna hand you like two lines of melody and you're gonna have to sight read it because they wanna make sure how fast you learn. And now Serena's gonna play some scales. So scales are an important part of your technique and you should be able to learn them. And depending on the instrument, you may have to play di a different number of octaves. Generally for the saxophone, you play around two um, at the most, so. And now we're going to have um, Sophia talk about how to prepare an art portfolio. And also, Sophia, when you want me to switch it to the next um, set of drawings, just, just let me know. Okay. So um, in the following slides, these were some of the pieces I included in my LaGuardia audition portfolio. So um, some of the pieces I did in like sixth grade, some in seventh grade, and some in eighth grade. So it's, re it's a really good idea to get like a head start in middle school to start preparing your portfolio. And if you're in high school and you're preparing for your college portfolio, also get a head start. So it's easier and it's less time consuming in the future. Um, so for LaGuardia and other high schools, usually the requirement for your portfolio is around eight to 15 pieces of original artwork done in a variety of different mediums. So you could use um, paintings like acrylic or oil paintings or even gouache. Um, you could also include like a lot of mixed media pieces where you have collages and paintings together. Um, some people are like they like to do digital media or they like to draw on their iPad. You could submit those pieces as well. Um, for LaGuardia, if you do a lot of 3D pieces outside of your school, you can't physically bring the 3D pieces with you, but you can include photographs of your 3D artwork. Um, so for LaGuardia, you have to bring your portfolio with you on your audition day. And that's the same for most of the arts high schools um, around the nation. And, and when you bring it to you, you're also going to do an audition process. So um, unlike instrumental, we're not going to be like playing pieces, but we will go through like some tests. Um, so what you do is when you get inside the school, you hand off your portfolio to usually a teacher or like a grader who's going to grade your portfolio, you will get your portfolio back the day you give it in. And then afterwards, you usually go to a classroom, an arts classroom on the seventh or eighth floor. And then um, you go through some tasks. So one of the tasks that LaGuardia does during the, um, during the audition is you have to draw a still life from memory. Another is you have to create a colored piece from like, and, and your imagination. So they'll give you like a prompt and then you have to just draw it out. And we use oil pastels in a lot of other high schools for their audition. They also use like oil pastel or color pencils. So I would get familiar with these materials before you take um, the audition test. And then another is we do have like a figure drawing. So for us, it was like 20 minutes and you had student models come in and they would sit there and then you had to draw a figure drawing. Um, and at the end of the audition, you also got an essay portion. And the essay portion isn't terrible. It's basically you're writing why you want to come to LaGuardia. So it's kind of like um, when you apply to college, you 
colleges will ask you why you want to come to that specific college. And but for LaGuardia, we also require you to write an essay on why you want to come to LaGuardia during the audition. Um, and it's around 40 minutes. So afterwards, after you leave um, the audition, they give you back your portfolio and then you await to hear if you got in or not in spring. Um, so so right now you see three of the artworks that I did. And for me, for my portfolio, I wanted to show them my strengths and that was mainly drawing portraits. So I really like to draw eyes because I feel like the when you draw the eyes, it, it's kind of like, it, it makes it, makes the drawing feel more alive. So what I did is I used different mediums to create portraits. So on the left, um, the furthest left, you see a man and that was done in oil pastel. And I used a reference photo from a very old painting. And the middle was from a photo that my art teacher had and it's done in pencil. And on the right, it's kind of mixed media. So I use a variety of different materials. Um, I use Sharpies. I also use color pencils. I use pencils and I use other materials to create that. So what a lot of art schools want to see is you, you they wanna see your technical skills, but they also wanna see your imagination, your creativity. So if you don't really know what to do, you could draw like a technical piece and then add in creative elements to it. Um, Serena, can you go on the next slide? So on the left is another portrait that I did. So I wanted to show them that I could draw humans. And on the right, I did this in when I was like around 12. And it was basically kind of like um, I used two reference photos and I kind of like changed them to show my creativity. Um, Serena. Um, on the left is a still life. So it's really good to have a few still life pieces in your portfolio to show them that you could draw from observation. So that was done in um, pencil and it took around like an hour. Um, and on the right, it's another still life, but it's done in paint, acrylic paint and oil pastel. The next slide, thank you. Um, on the left, it's another um, portrait and it's done in graphite and it's also done in pencil and I use an eraser. Um, so I drew a lot of like female, so I wanted to show them that I could also draw males. So I included this piece. And on the right, it's another look, and it's also in a acrylic and pastel. On the left, I included a parrot to show that I could draw animals. And it was done in watercolor, so I didn't include any other watercolor pieces, and I wanted to show them that I do know how to use watercolor. And the right is another still life, um, and the still life was done in oil pastel. Serena. So now I'm going to talk about, now we're going to talk about some outside opportunities. So whether or not you go to an art school, it's a great idea to get involved in the arts outside of school. And um, yeah, so uh, first off, I'm going to talk briefly about performance ensembles. Um, many of us at LaGuardia, but also other schools across New York City are part of what's called the New York City All City Program. And this is basically a citywide um, program for a bunch of different performance ensembles. There's marching band, there's concert band, there's choir, there's Latin band, there's jazz band. Um, and basically what this allows is we practice usually on the weekends a couple hours per weekend and we prepare for several culminating concerts, usually one in December um, towards Christmas and then one in um, May, so the spring. And so usually we perform um, at venues like NYU at the end of the year. And what this does basically is you have to audition in and then if you get in, you practice every single week with students from around the city and you prepare for, a comp for the um, concert together. And I think this is, I'm gonna play a video clip of part of our concert from last year.
Yeah, so yeah, that was from our May 2019 concert. And this is not a program that um, only New York City has. A lot of cities across the world have them as well. Um, I know like there, I know in Australia, they have similar programs in their cities. I know Chicago has one and all that. So you can probably get involved in them pretty easily. Um, I heard about it from our music teachers and you can, you can ask your teacher if they know of any of these kinds of opportunities in your city or you can look on your, if your city has like an education website, like the New York City DOE, they also put information up on those websites a lot of the time. And now Eli is going to talk about some pre-college programs. Yeah, so um, at our school, there are a lot of kids that are certain that they want to go to music conservatory. They want to enter like uh, the classical music field and be professional full-time musicians. So if you're really, if you're really ambitious about that, um, you should consider pre-college programs in high school, even if you're in an art school. So pre-college programs are offered at music conservatories every Saturday. Um, and they're about, I know it says on the slide, they're a couple hours, but most of them are about eight to nine hours per Saturday. And then you also might have some classes during the week. Um, I know in, in New York City, we have the Juilliard School, Manus School, and Manhattan School of Music, and they all offer pre-college on Saturdays that a lot of um, ambitious LaGuardia students go to. And um, I know in like San Francisco, the San Francisco Conservatory offers pre-college there. So the, um, if you're in like a major city, um, you should probably look into whatever um, prestigious conservatories in the city and see if they offer a pre-college program. So within the pre-college program, you take private lessons. Uh, most of them are orchestral, uh, orchestral. So if you're like a winds player, you're not going to be in a band. You're going to play in an orchestra, and you're also going to be in chamber ensembles. You're going to learn. Uh, you're going to learn uh, rhythmic training, harmonic training, music theory, um, and yeah, they're pretty competitive, but. They're really good for kids who are very ambitious about their talent and want more than uh, just the school. And then on top of pre-college programs, let's of course not forget about private lessons. So if you're at LaGuardia, um, even if you're not too ambitious, you don't wanna to go to a pre-college program or you don't wanna do a Saturday program, it's always a good um, decision to have private lessons because um, at LaGuardia, we don't, there are so many students that it's really hard to get a lot of individualized training unless you go to a teacher yourself. So if you want a lot of individualized training and want to improve a lot, um, you can always uh, do private lessons. And that's all I have to say about music extracurriculars. So I'm going to hand it over to Sophia to discuss the Scholastic competition and other competitions. Um, so one of the, okay, two of them, two big national competitions for um, students like us are the Young Arts Competition and the Scholastic Arts and Writing Competition. Um, but we also do have a lot of other pre-college programs if you're interested in visual arts. And for some of them, you do have to audition or for others, you might have to like submit a portfolio. And just to add on for the portfolios for high school, you must also label your work. And when you submit portfolios to these pre-college programs, it's a good idea to label your work and write down the size and mediums that you use. So a big pre-college program in New York City is the Cooper Union program. And across the country, you could find pre-college programs in universities or arts conservatories near you. Um, so the Scholastic competition I've entered since seventh grade and how it's broken down is there's the regional awards. So that's, so there's, re so the U.S. is broken up into different regions for the Scholastic Arts competition. And then if you win your regional award, which means you can either get a gold key, a silver key, or an honorable mention, um, there's usually a ceremony that's held for you and you do get like a certificate. If you get a gold key, or silver key, you also get these like really cute like gold keys and silver keys. Um, and if you get a gold key and you're in a pretty big town or a pretty big city like New York City, um, or you're even in a smaller kind of town, there's they usually give you the opportunity to showcase your gold key work in a museum. 
Um, so for New York City, if you get a gold key, and this is pretty awesome, um, your work will be showcased at the Metropolitan Museum of Art for a period of time. So that's pretty awesome. Um, so the competition is open to public, private, or homeschool students in the United States, Canada, or American schools in the rest of the world um, who are enrolled in grades seven to 12. So basically ages 13 and up are eligible to participate in the Scholastic Awards. Um, so once you get a gold key, your artwork or writing, so this is an art or writing competition, you could submit to both categories. Um, your work will be sent to national judging. So in March, you're notified either you, I, if you become a national medalist. So you can either get a silver medal or a gold medal. And people who receive a gold medal will be invited to New York City at Carnegie Hall for a special ceremony. Um, and usually they have like guest speakers come and then talk to students about more arts opportunities. Um, so as a senior, you can also submit an art portfolio and that also considers you for more awards. Um, and for Scholastic, there's also smaller awards within each category. So for art, you could submit, there, there's a category for film, there's a category for printmaking, ceramics, drawing and illustration. You can find more information our, on artandwriting.org, but they have a lot of categories. And sometimes each category might have their own award which is pretty cool because for some of these like smaller awards or like more specific awards within each category, you can win a lot of scholarship money. All right. So I didn't add this to the slide, but I also wanted to briefly touch on volunteering because that's a very important part of extracurriculars as well. And um, what we do, especially at United Under Art, we like to use like the arts to volunteer. So we usually provide arts opportunities, concerts, um, workshops, that sort of thing, to um, a lot of underprivileged communities or vulnerable populations, particularly children and the elderly. And um, so I'm going to play you an example of a piece that um, I would use for volunteering purposes. sort of piece it's not as technically challenging as the audition piece I played earlier and usually for these kinds of pieces if you're going to be volunteering you want to play something more easy listening so to speak or more, more mainstream because it's to appeal to a wider audience and you want to play something that will appeal to them and will make them happy and um, also before we go to questions I also wanted to briefly touch on again um, these are examples of arts opportunities, but you don't, but don't feel like, you know, if you do all of this and you go to a music school, you have to do the arts or you don't really have time for the academics or any other thing that you might want to pursue because you do. And many of us do pursue those kinds of opportunities. And um, um, I think for me, at least, the biggest gift that the arts and going to an art school gave me was the ability to combine a lot of those things with the academics. And to realize that you know you don't have to keep them separate because you can do things that relate to STEM and the arts. And you can do like, for instance, if you wanted to do um, research into the arts, but using like a STEM format, or you know what we do with United Under Art, which is we collaborate with a lot of STEM programs and humanities programs to talk about you know how the arts bridge the gaps between a lot of these different subjects. So now we're going to um, go to questions. So if you have any questions, you can put them to the, on the chat and um, we will answer them. And later on, if you have any further questions, you can also contact us. Um, our website is unitedunderart.com and you can scan the 
um, the QR code here, or you can email us, email us directly at info at unitedunderart.com. While we are waiting for people to submit their questions, um, perhaps uh, one of you can elaborate a little bit more about what a day in the school is like. Uh, I, I heard that you mentioned it's a dual mission school. And what does that exactly mean? Do you guys have to take more class in a day than a normal school would take? And does that mean you have to stay around after school to complete additional requirements on music or visual arts, you know, club activities or um, performance? Uh, so what, what's the biggest difference you see in this school from a, a regular, say, STEM school like Stevenson, which also offer uh, arts class? Um, so at LaGuardia, um, our arts classes are just, they're part of our schedule. So at LaGuardia, there is a 1 to 10 period schedule from 8 a.m. to 4.09 p.m. And within this schedule, most um, art students have at least three arts classes a day. Freshman year, certain kids have two, but generally sophomore year, going onwards you have three arts classes a day and most kids have four to five core academic subjects which are like second language and then uh, history English math and science um, junior senior year a lot of students can uh, drop science math or uh, second language and they can replace them with extra arts classes so a lot of kids who want to go to conservatory they'll sometimes have five arts classes and like three academic classes by senior year because they fulfilled their requirements. But most students generally just take three arts classes a day, which usually include like a performance ensemble um, or in Sophia's case, a double period and single period. Um, and then they just have the standard four to five core academic subjects. And in your starting your um, freshman year to the to your sophomore year, you also get the chance to take an honors English course. So that is the only honors course um, for English that you can take. And after that, you could take AP English language and composition, or just go back to regular English. And in your senior year, you get a lot of electives. So some people might take film, or some others might take creative writing. Um, so starting your sophomore year, you are allowed to start taking AP classes. Um, and then you could take them through from sophomore year to your, to your senior year. And another honors course that LaGuardia offers is honors Spanish 5 and 6. So that is after you take um, regular Spanish 3 and 4, you're going to be placed into 5 and 6. But a lot of people opt to drop Spanish after one year. Um, we are allowed to do that because we have a lot of credits from our arts classes. Um, something different about LaGuardia compared to like Stuyvesant for arts classes, especially for visual arts, is we have a vast network of different like alumni and they do come back and they visit us. So the alumni are still very connected to this school and our parent association invite artists all the time to come back and some of the students, their parents also work in the field of the arts and they come to class and they talk about what they do during the day. Um, or sometimes we invite like artists that like you're interested in and it's specific for your class. Like if you're taking a ceramics class, they might invite someone who has experience in ceramics. They might reach out to them and they might come to talk to you about ceramics. Um, for example, for my AP art class this year, we invited the nephew of Andy Warhol to come. So his daughter actually attended LaGuardia Arts um, years ago and he came back and he talked about getting a career in the arts and how to support yourself as an artist. And that's pretty cool. Um, so for LaGuardia, the school day is longer than a regular school day. Most schools do end at like around two or 2.30. Um, for us, we usually, 
most people end at 409, but some people might end at 320, which is the end of ninth period. But if you're in extracurricular activities, you might stay in school until like six or seven. If you're working on a show, it could be as late as 10 or 11. Um, if you're on a sports team, so I play on two varsity sports teams, you do stay after school for around one to two hours for practice, but it's not every day. Um, but everyone at LaGuardia is very supportive. So let's say you're in an extracurricular activity or you're working on a show, but you just have a lot of homework. You could talk to the teacher and the teachers are, um, they, they will listen and they will allow you to like miss one or two days. Oh, yeah, also, sure. um, oh, could I just uh, explain blackouts for a second? Yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah. So at LaGuardia, when you have a concert, um, I think when you're in a senior ensemble, so again, I said we have like usually four levels on, of ensembles from elementary to senior. So if you're in a senior orchestra or a senior band, or if you're in the musical pit, if you're in like the top ensemble for your concert, you will skip one to two days of school to prepare. Um, so if there's an orchestra concert in January, um, I had to skip two full days of school um, before the concert and um, yes, you are required to make up that work, but again, if you just talk to teachers, they will understand. So as you can see from the dual mission, it's really, it's not, you know, dominated by the arts or dominated by the academics. It's really a balance of the two. And um, what's great about this is you get an opportunity to really explore the arts and to really, really develop that passion and that talent. And of course, to network with people in the arts fields. Um, what Sophia said about the alumni, it's true also for like actors, dancers, all of that as well. Um, and so, you know, with Stuyvesant, you can take art classes, but um, because, you know, they're not going to offer as many classes to really, really delve deeply into the arts world. And because, you know, most of the stuff is going to be more academic focused, so they may not be as understanding if you have a lot of arts opportunities or like if you really want to pursue the arts. So um, if that's something that you want to do and you think that it would be interesting, even though you know you might have an extra couple day, couple classes, you might have to stay longer after school, that's something I would say it's definitely something you should pursue and it's not terribly um, time consuming because the teachers do understand because it is a very special circumstance. Great. Um I, I did get uh, a parent uh, send me a private message. Uh, this is a parent from uh, Beijing. And she was asking about, because I don't, it, her kid is interested in, in music or arts, but, but not necessarily wanting to pursue that as a career. So she was wondering, um, in your school, what percentage of the students you would say that end up going to a arts college versus going to, I guess, supposedly a regular college, if there's such a thing? And um, what, what advantage a LaGuardia's education would provide a kid when it comes time for a college application? Um. I, I can answer this one first. So um, a lot of students actually do go to arts college, but not a lot of students um, become professionals in the art um, because I'm going to admit it. Uh, it's really hard to be a full-time professional in your art. You're going to have to develop a lot of business skills on the side. You can't just play your instrument or draw and then expect to succeed. So a lot of students end up going into, um, well, first of all, a lot of students just go academic. They just, um, they went to LaGuardia to like develop uh, their art skills, but they don't, they don't want to pursue as, as um, a large part of their lives. So they just go academic, but I'd say a good amount of students go to schools where they can take uh, dual classes. So they pursue a music major. And then alongside of that, they'll also like pursue um, uh, business concentration. So they'll graduate school with um, a lot of business skills, um, but uh, they'll also have a lot of music skills as well. Um, and helping out with college apps, I would say that going 
going to a performance art school really helps out with college applications because a lot of U.S. schools look at you holistically. They want to see that you're passionate about uh, one or two things. And if they see that you go to an art school and on top of that, you're doing arts extracurriculars and such, they, um, they'll they pick you for a, a well-rounded class um, for next year. So it definitely gives you a lot of character going to an art school rather than going to a normal school and taking a few arts classes. And to add on to that, I would also say that um, we don't have a definitive percentage, but I would say that, you know, like Eli said, there are a, a fair amount of kids that do go to these kinds of schools like Juilliard and Oberlin and all sorts of um, art schools and conservatories. But we also have a lot of students every single year that make it into the top schools and don't decide to pursue arts as a career. We have students, you know, going to the Ivy schools and like MIT and all of the other top schools as well and majoring in things like journalism, psychology, STEM, business all of that sort of thing. And um, like Eli said, when you when you apply to college, colleges don't wanna just see you as, oh, like I pursued everything according to my major. I was like the perfect kid with the best stats and like all of my extracurriculars are like, if, if you know, if you wanna go into STEM, all of them are just like STEM competitions and stuff. They want to see a person that, you know, kind of cares more about that and cares more and has a unique story and a unique background. And so, um, and I think a lot of the kids at Stuyvesant do know this as well, which is why there a lot of them do also pursue arts extracurriculars. But when going to a specific performing arts school, that also tells colleges, you know, you're very dedicated to this as well. But you can also handle the same amount of academic rigor, and you have also a lot of academic extracurriculars as well, which really shows that you're very good with self-discipline and management, and also you have um, a passion outside of you know what you're what your major is, if that makes sense. Yeah, like speaking um, for how many people like go to pursue like an academic route, um, there, are a, there are a handful of people that continue to go to like, go towards the arts and go to like conservatories. Um, but there also, there's also a lot of people who are already like working artists, like specifically like drama majors. A lot of drama majors, they're already in like big films um some some of my like friends that I know and some of my classmates they like fly back and forth between LA and New York City so they're also taking on the academic course load they're taking AP classes but they're also doing a lot of films and for our school um for when you're a senior they also call in like casting agents for like drama majors so for a lot of drama majors they might decide that they don't want to pursue an academic degree in college or they might take on an academic minor in college and then pursue the arts as a major. Or some of them might just like go and they already have like a job or a contract and they just might not decide to like go to college. But for arts, major, for, for visual arts majors, a bunch of, I would say a bunch of students do tend to kind of like mix academic and visual arts in college. So I know a bunch of people who are taking, who are minoring in maybe like biochemistry, but they're majoring in graphic design, or there are people who are double majoring in graphic design and bio bioengineering. So it really depends on the student, but there is like a fair share of people who only go to the academic route. There also are a lot of people who go to like just the arts, but there is, I guess, like a bigger percentage of people when they go to college, they do do take either like an academic or arts minor or an academic or arts major and they mix it together. Yeah, and so like, yeah, so as you can see, like we have, you know, the same, roughly the same number of academic extracurriculars and opportunities at our school in terms of APs and high level classes and clubs. Um, but then we also have the added benefit of, you know, casting agents coming or like people scouting at our musicals because, you know, they know that a lot of people that go to LaGuardia are very talented and have that sort of passion for it as well. So you have that added benefit of, you know, you have the same, you know, a lot of the same academic opportunities, but then you also have, you know, that extra arts opportunity, opportunities because of what the school is known for and how talented the student body is. 
Great answers. And, and but that, that being said, I, I kind of understand uh, why Piran had, had the question about the school and uh, uh, so knowing the dual mission focus. And I also heard that your organization try to bridge STEM and arts. And can you elaborate on that? You know, outside the school, mm -hmm. are there other opportunities you can pursue uh, if you're interested in STEM in, in addition to arts? Can, yeah. can one of you give me examples that that's something that you have been able to do? Yeah, so for, um, well, for, for other opportunities in STEM and the arts, there aren't very many, which is um, part of the reason why I wanted to do United Under Art and why um, some other kids that, you know, may not be artists have joined us because um, it doesn't, uh, on the surface glance, it doesn't really seem like something you can combine together. But um, I would say they're very important because the arts, if you study the arts, it also increases your STEM um, capabilities of understanding STEM topics and doing well in STEM subjects um, because it gives you like a creative side and a more interpretive side. And then um, in terms of what we do, well, um, I'm going to turn it to, oh, for some reason it's not. Um, I'm going to turn to some of our previous events, um, notably the, the last one, which is what we did with, um, we call it a STEAM collaboration with Helix, which is a STEM nonprofit. So what we did here is for students that are interested in STEM and the arts, we, um, we assigned them some research topics to look into about, you know, like particularly how the arts helps people with STEM. Um, so some topics we did were like, you know, how music ther therapy helps with neurodegenerative diseases, which that covers neuroscience, if you're interested in that, but it also covers, you know, the arts and like, you know, different music forms and different art forms. And we also had them, we're also doing current, we're currently doing um, a video series on that as well. So, um, and then also, um, so that shows, you know, um, a more, I guess, visual effect um, with animations and stuff like that um, into like, you know, how STEM and the arts intersect. Um, so yeah, so that's, those are, that's an example of something that we do for um, STEM and the arts. And in terms of other STEM opportunities, um, there are of course a bunch of competitions you can participate in. Um, there are, there's Science Olympiad and there's um, Mu Alpha Theta, which is the math honor society. And of course, there are a bunch of STEM programs you can pursue as well um, in terms of like internships or summer programs and that sort of thing. Um, but um, I would say as of right now, at least I don't know of a lot of things that do STEM and the arts, which is part of the reason why we wanted to start United Under Art because we wanted to show you know, the arts is not something you just want, you can, you know, you just have to keep separate from everything else because it ties into a lot of other things as well. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, UUA or in Chinese, yeah. Uh, yeah, so United Under Art, um, so it's completely student led and it was started last year. Um, I decided to start it because um, there aren't a lot of um, opportunities for students to get directly involved in arts volunteering a lot of the times. Um, you can do that on an individual level, but sometimes it's hard, you know, depending on the, the community you live in. Um, so right now it's, yeah, so it's a global organization and we have students right now from um, um, around 13, 14 countries and um, 200 members around the world. And um, what we do, we usually do arts events. So this is one of our events because we're doing this online workshop to talk about, you know, the arts, but also how to balance that with the academics. We also raise money to support local causes like helping artists during COVID-19 and also fundraising for the hospitals in New York City. And um, so you can also, you can check out our website for um, more information, but I can just briefly scroll through it. This is just talking about um, why we were established and what it's like today. Um, this is our team page with all of us on it. 
So as you can see, um, this is our executive team, but we have more members on our um, large group chat. And then these are some resources that we have. These are just um, general articles to learn about, you know, why the arts are so important. And again, like why the art, the arts and um, other like diseases and conditions and stuff like that. And why it's so important along with reg regular medication that you might develop in a laboratory. And then events, as I showed you guys, are just some of our current events and past events. So what we're currently doing is this workshop series and also um, a card campaign to help um, to send to healthcare workers in Liberia um, to cheer them up and tell them, you know, how much we appreciate the work that they're doing. And here you can see our chapters. One of our unique features is that we have um, chapters around the world and they do local events. So like New York City, we did a concert at a New York City nursing home. Um, North Carolina, they did a fundraiser for a local North Carolina charity that's helping artists, that sort of thing. So we currently, I think, I believe we have like around 10 chapters right now um, in India, the US and Canada. And we're having, and we're also going to be setting up more chapters in, um, I believe Germany and Pakistan in during the summer. And then if, you, if you're interested in joining us, um, you can click on the join us button here or on the presentation, it's this QR code, I believe. And um, just to make sure that you guys aren't um, turned off by the fact that it is very arts heavy, it's not purely an arts organization exactly. Our main focus in terms of the volunteering is arts because um, we feel that that's not as represented in terms of volunteering and in terms of extracurricular activities that you can pursue. But um, we have a lot of kids that are, you know, that want to go into STEM or want to go into business. Um, um, I don't know if you saw on the Meet the Team page, but we have a technical team. So if you're into technology, if you're into CS, if you're into coding, that sort of thing, you can join our technical team. If you know video design, um, that's also something that the technical team does. And, um, or if you want to do marketing, Sophia heads the marketing team. So you can also do marketing on social media, graphic design, or just in general, you know, contacting sponsors. And then of course, we also have STEM opportunities as we partner with Helix, which is a STEM nonprofit to um, do videos and articles on the intersection of STEM and the arts. So really we have opportunities in pretty much every single field that you could imagine. Uh, that's great. Do you have a, a chapter in China yet? No, we don't. Because Do, well, the reason I'm asking is I know there are parents or kids from China listening in now. Do you have a plan to set up chapter in China? Well, for us, we don't directly set up chapters. Um, we have the students come, like we um, recruit students and if they want to set up a chapter, then they tell us, but we, because we're not in China, we can't directly set up a chapter in there. So we generally, um, in terms of chapter setup, it's usually local students who come to us and express interest in setting up a chapter or we can reach out to other organizations and, or um, students and say, you know, would you be interested in setting up up a chapter in your area. Um, we don't we don't really pick and choose and say, you know, we're going to decide to set up a chapter in this area. Um, it kind of comes to us, so to, so to say. So, um, um, but if, yeah, if you're yeah. interested in setting up a chapter in China, though, uh, on our website, we do have a Google form that can be accessible if you want to contact us to set up a chapter. I don't know where it is, though. It's um, here. It's yeah, start a chapter right there. And I know like, um, you know, it, um, because Google is not accessible in China. So if you, if you can't access the form, you can also email us directly, or you can, um, I guess, I mean, if you want to contact my father, he can give you my WeChat and we can discuss it. Um, but yeah, basically the only thing really on the chapter form that we need to know is really just roughly what, what grade you're in and um, where you're setting up the chapter. So we don't have multiple chapters in the same area. Um, there's, it's not like an application form or anything. We just need to know so that we don't have um, logistical problems in that. Yeah. I got another question uh, about the, the mission into, into the school. 
Um, how competitive is the admission process or, or roughly what percentage of the still kids will get in? Um, well, I think when we applied, our, there was kind of an issue surrounding our school where they um, cared about grades way more than they cared about the arts. So when we auditioned, um, it was mainly our grades that determined if we got in, but our old principal has been like, she resigned and we have a new principal now that values the arts way more. So now, um, so recently um, it's become way more competitive to get into LaGuardia. Um, percentage wise, I'd say that when we auditioned, art had about a 20% acceptance rate. Dance is really low. Dance can be downwards of like 3%, 1%. Um, and then instrumental music can be around 15%. Um, but, and then, so drama and dance tend to be the really, really competitive ones. And then um, art, instrumental, vocal, they're competitive as well, but not as competitive. But again, we just got a new principal. So it has become way more competitive than usual. They care way more about your arts talents than your grades. Um, I was gonna say one more thing, but does anyone have anything to add? Um, I believe our acceptance rate right now is, I think it's like a 7% acceptance rate, but don't quote me on that. You can find it on the LaGuardia website under like the news and announcements in the videos because we recently had a virtual open house. So it's become more selective because now um, the school is looking at both your like talent and your course load. And there was a lot of changes that have been made since we have a new principal now. Um, but uh, generally New York City high schools have really low acceptance rates, like, like Stuyvesant, Bard High School, they have like the same acceptance rates as Yale. But keep in mind that a lot of that, there are students from all corners of the city auditioning. And a lot of these students aren't that prepared. It's an, it's an issue that we're still facing today. And it, that is one of the reasons uh, Serena founded United Under Art. But a lot of kids in New York City who audition are not um, highly prepared. So the more you prepare, even though the acceptance rate is very daunting, um, the bigger your um, chances of getting in will be.